Hey, this is Daniel from Matarama. I'm here high above the streets of New York City at my studio and we're talking about street photography. So the last few videos we've done, we've covered a lot of different techniques on street photography and I want to cover some of the mechanics. So when you're out on the street, some of the things that you can have preset to make your time go quicker and get more uh, keepers, if you will. So one of the things I like to do is use a small camera. I like to use this Fuji mirrorless camera. There's many companies, Olympus, Canon, Sony, a lot of people make uh, mirrorless cameras. They're small and compact, so they're, they're, you can carry it with you without being so heavy. And also they're not so much uh, noticeable by people when they, they kind of walk up on you. I like to use a manual lens. I have this Leica lens adapted here because all the settings are very tactile. So when I'm making adjustments on my camera, I don't necessarily have to look at it. I can feel how things click and feel as I'm doing it. So that's important because when I'm working on the street, I don't want to keep looking down at my camera, especially if I'm trying to be, uh, you know, not noticed by people walking around me. The other thing I do is I know they make different, all kinds of different camera straps and wrist straps, but I like to use the original strap that came with my camera and I wrap it around my wrist several times. This allows me to keep the camera in my hand in a shootable position at all times, but also take some of the stress off of it and I don't have to worry about dropping it. So as I said in the previous video, aperture priority can be your friend. I like to work manually though in the street and the thing that I do is I like to set my aperture up front and I don't really change it as I go. As I walk into different situations, I'll change my shutter speed to, to work with the light. The first thing I do is when I'm out on the street, I meter against the ground. So the, the gray on the street, the, the concrete, is kind of 18% grayish. It gives you a pretty good overall reading. So I get my basic reading off of that. And then as I walk into different areas that might be brighter or darker, I just adjust my shutter speed as needed. I occasionally check the meter if I need to, but after a while you get a feel for it. Depending on your camera and how good it is at higher ISOs, you can set it wherever you like. I like to stay around 400 ISO. That seems to be a good place to be that's not too high, high where I get a lot of noise, but not so low that I have to work with too slow of a shutter speed. So when I'm walking around looking for things to shoot, like kind of run and gun style, I like to preset my camera and my focus. The way that I do that is one of two ways. Either I get a general feeling, depending on what lens I'm, I have on, about where subjects should be. So I'll look out in front of me at something that seems like it'd be a good frame. I'll frame it up and I'll focus there. That usually t tends to be about, about 10 feet from my personal style. And then I just get used to knowing when I'm about that far away from things so I know it's in focus. You get used to it after a while, you just pick up the camera, you shoot, you're good to go. You also want to keep your aperture relatively small to give you enough depth of field. The other way to do it is what they call hyperfocal. When you're using an APS size sensor like this one, it's not exactly lined up with the lens the way I'm going to show it, but because the lenses are made for full frame, but the general idea works. It's pretty close and it's good enough for, for my use. So if you want to get exact precise hyperfocal, uh, numbers you can go online there's lots of calculators to do it but the really general way to do it is to take the aperture that you're going to shoot at let's say in this case f11 and then I turn the infinity mark of my lens to f11 here and then I look at the other f11 which is right there which is like just a little bit past five feet and that tells me everything from about five or six feet to infinity will be in focus enough that gives me a lot of versatility so if I'm walking around at f11 with this camera I pretty much am getting whatever I want in focus unless it's really close to me so I've found for most street stuff, I like to shoot either at f11 or f16 and around 250th of a second. So I try to get myself set up in that spot. At 250, you can stop action of your hand quickly going up to, to do things or also somebody running across the street. But you can't stop extreme action, obviously, but it's fast enough to stop a lot of general action. At f11, f16, I have plenty of depth of field that if I'm close in focus, I'll get enough of a good shot that I can blow it up to like an 8x10 with no problem. So hopefully this inspires you to hit the streets. Again, if you use a small camera, you can keep it with you everywhere. I usually leave this Fuji in my backpack, so I pretty much always have it with me. Whenever my hands aren't full of other things, I just keep it in my hand. Something exciting happens, I shoot it. Nothing exciting happens, I put it away. It's not really a big deal. Starting next week, we're gonna get back into the studio and do some lighting techniques, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Adorama TV, and I'll see you next time on set.